our moms, our coaches, sometimes, you know, singers, rappers, they sing these cool songs about, oh, winners wanted more, winners find a way, winners win, 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 right? And oftentimes, it sounds good. But what does it ultimately do to a lot of us? It makes us scared to what? Lose. To lose. And wrestling scared to lose is a really bad way to wrestle. I'm going to use a really dark example. This is a little dark. But it'll make sense here in a second. Who's heard, when you guys were not born yet, of what happened on September 11th. Sad day, right? There's stories about people on like the 100th floor or whatever it was, really high up, in Tower 1. Tower 2 fell first. Tower 1 was still up. Now, the plane had already hit both towers. Tower 2 went down. And the people on the 100th floor what do they know is about to probably happen? It's going to collapse. So they think they're very scared that they might die. They're so scared that they might die, they freeze at their desk and they don't move. And it's easy for us to say, because we're comfortable right now, well, you should run down the stairs. Go, right? Sometimes we're so scared something's going to happen, we let it happen. We're so scared to lose, we literally manifest our own loss. It's a really bad thing that we inherently do as humans. Sometimes we're so scared to lose in wrestling, we literally write our own story and lose. Not on purpose, but oh, man, if I shoot... I might get scored on, but I don't want to lose, but I also don't want to get scored on. If you want to be someone who scores points, you have to be completely okay and accepting of what happened, getting scored on. You don't get the best of both worlds. You have to be open-minded enough to say, I want to score points. I'm okay getting scored on. You have to be able to say that. If you want to ask the best looking person out of school, what do you got to be okay with having them? Getting curved. If you want to shoot, I have to be okay with this person spinning. If you want the good to happen, you have to be willing to let the bad in. You don't get the best of both worlds. So I want everybody to say out loud right now, I'm not scared to give up points. I'm not scared, scared to give up, up points. If you start wrestling, scared to give up points, you'll do zero moves. That's a really hard way to wrestle. It sucks. What do you value in wrestling? Not the outcome. But my dad said winners win and winners want it more. Who's lost in it? You've lost, right? You want it less than the other guy or sometimes we just lose. Now there's times we'll break, I'm not saying that. But sometimes we just lose, because why? Because they were better wrestling for that day. They were better. It's not an excuse. They were better at wrestling. The excuse is, oh, if I would have wanted it more, I could have won. No, you could not. They were way better than me. Instead of thinking, oh, I could have won if I wanted it more, you should be thinking, what do I have to get better at? Where do I have to improve? That's the mindset. Detach yourself from results. Oh, does that mean everybody gets a ribbon and, and, and a participation? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is if you want to see what the best version of you is, you need to detach yourself from results and start putting yourself in positions to just be hyper-present. Anybody know who Kale Sanderson is? Pretty good wrestler, right? Pretty good coach. Kale coached against me 10 times a cup. So I wouldn't say we were friendly, but in passing, we'd say hi, right? So, I'm at the Big Ten Tournament one year. And if you watch Penn State, every single one of their athletes does something really goofy when they wrestle. They all take their fingers and they touch them like this. 
And then they go knee, knee, shoulder, shoulder, fingers. And it looks like, you know how baseball players have a weird superstition? It looks like that, but it's 25, 33, 41. They all do it up the line. Every single one. So I'm in the elevator. Kale gets in. I go, Kale, why do your athletes do that? He goes, well, why don't you put your fingers together? So everybody goes, like besides why is Johnny making you do this? In your simplest terms, what do you think about it? Not even that, no, no, no. Not, 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 not getting in depth. I'm putting my fingers together. Good job. In your simplest terms, I'm putting my fingers together. Then he said something very interesting. He said, if your mind is at the end of a match, oh, I hope I win, I hope I don't lose, oh my gosh, people are watching, there's so many people here, my girlfriend's here, my side girl's here, just kidding, bye, right on that. But <laughs> if your mind is at the end of a match, technically, your mind is seven minutes in the future, right? It's at the end of the match. How can you be the best version of yourself in the moment if your mind is seven minutes in the future? You can't. Where does this keep? Right here in the moment. You're not going to forget how to wrestle. Oh, no, I got to walk like this 17 hours before my match and stare my kid down. No, you don't. Relax. You can be intense for sure. That's not what I'm saying, right? I want you to have a little chip on your shoulder. That's good. But you're not going to forget how to wrestle. So go out there, take a deep breath, and try to do cool moves. And try to score more. That's your job. To try to score more. That's all you got to do. Not to try to win by doing less. Your job is to go out there and try to score points. That's it. How can you be the best version of yourself at practice if your mind is already two hours in the future at the end of practice? Oh, I hope I lost weight. How much longer is that? He said last sprint, now he's saying overtime. This is not present, right? This is not present. How could your mind be the best version of you <laughs> in November if you're already at March at the state tournament? You can't. Now, does that mean you can't have goals looking forward? No, that's not what I said. Does that mean you can't look at the past and learn from it? No, that's not what I said. What I'm saying is in the moment of action, be where? Be here. And get after it. Have fun, score points, try hard. That's your job. Not win. Because you know what a byproduct of having fun and scoring a lot of points usually is? You usually get your hand raised. Good things happen. But if you only focus on getting your hand raised, sometimes we don't try to score a lot of points. We wrestle not to lose. Oh, you gotta hate losing more than you love winning. No, you don't. You have to love competing more than anything at all. And we oftentimes don't even want to compete. We just want to take a, if you just want to win, go play T-ball. You'll win everything. I guarantee you guys secretly all love challenging competitions more than you love winning. I guarantee it. Here's an example. You're playing a video game. And every single time you play the video game, you die. And you're stuck on this level. You're like, yo, I just can't get through this freaking level. I freaking hate this. You go in your controller. You hate it. Boom, you die. Reset. Go again. Boom, you die. Reset. Go again. Boom, you die. Reset. Go again. And you're frustrated. All of a sudden, someone comes up and goes, yo, I have a cheat code. If you type XAXABBC, it pushes you to the next level and you have unlimited lives. Well, you start playing and what's probably going to happen after a few hours? It gets boring. 100%. So we don't actually love the win. We think we do. We think we do. We don't. We love how hard it is. That's the addicting thing. So instead of looking at this, like some treacherous dragon that I have to go slay. Like, oh my gosh, I have to beat this kid now. He's undefeated. Oh my God, I hate my life. I, he, he beat me last night. Ah. Look at it like, ooh, I'm playing the video. It's pretty sick. Because that's exciting. I promise you, you will feel numb and lifeless if it wasn't hard and challenging. I promise you. But you got to value it. you got to really value it, right? My, my one coach in college always used a cup of water as an example. This is a water bottle, right, with dirt in it. 
If I let it sit for a really long time, what happens to the water and the dirt? It separates. The coach actually told me this. The coach is at Nebraska right now. His name's Travel Delat for uh, Olympic bronze medals. Unbelievable coach. Now, it separates. The dirt is at the bottom, the water is at the top. I want you to pretend this is a metaphor for easy choices in life. If I take a sip off the top, am I going to taste any dirt at the bottom? No. What's an example of a super clean, easy sip that would be like a choice with it? That's an easy choice. What do you think? What? Someone said that. So sleep. No, I wouldn't say what I'd say sleeping in. Right? You could have woke up early. That would have been dirty water, right? That's gross. That's uncomfortable. But you chose to sleep in through your workout. Is that clean water? That's a pretty easy choice, right? How about you could have ate good. You could have ate cake. I'm sorry, you could have ate salad, but it's gross. Instead, you ate cake and junk food. Well, you kind of made the easy choice. You broke it, right? What about uh, you could have done five reps, but instead you did three? Did you taste any dirt? Nah, it wasn't that uncomfortable. You chose an easy choice. That's a baby sip. That's clean water. It's good. Well, when you take enough easy sips, what do you eventually get down to? The dirt. And in life, what eventually, usually, inevitably happens? Hard things happen, right? Hard things happen. Is grandma dying? Something that is probably going to be hard one day is maybe getting fired from a job going to be hard one day. Sure. Is getting broken up going to be hard one day? Sure. Is injuries hard? For sure. Now, if inevitably something hard happens in real life and all I ever made was easy choices, am I going to be ready for that thing that's really hard to deal with one day? Probably not. Probably not. Now, what does wrestling do that's very, very interesting? It simulates hardship. Shakes your water. And now when you take a sip, you taste the dirt every day. You oh, that was gross. You're not tough. You're not strong. You're not fast. Every day, you're simulating real life hardship, correct? You're doing sprints. I hate my life. I want to kill myself. This sucks. I'm cutting weight. Right? We've all been there. You ever been cutting weight? You're just like, oh, dude, I can just, just drive off the road right now. Right, right, don't do that. But, and then if you think like, you're like, oh, I might as well have a Gatorade and then you're back room. Nah, that's bad. So, it simulates real life hardship. Every day it shakes your water. Every single day. Now, when something bad happens in real life, this, because you wrestle, does it make it easier? No. But you know what it does make it? Manageable, because you put yourself in that turbulence every single time you were injured. Because you put yourself in that chaos, that simulated hardship. I lost my mom when I was 16 years old. Car accident. Would you consider that hardship? Of course. Just because I wrestled doesn't make it easy to lose my mom. There's people and badasses all over the world that never wrestled that have probably gotten over the loss of someone. But this is a very important tool that I want you to start valuing. Instead of, oh my gosh, he said all the time, I don't want to do this, oh my gosh, you need to start finding value in that. Wow, he said over time, I don't want to do this, I hate this, this is going to be really good one day when real life turbulence happens, when real life hardship takes place. Does that make sense? Find value in things that suck. Because a lot of times they're really good for you. Find value in things that are terrible. Because a lot of times they're really good for you. Right? And be present. Focus more on trying to score than trying to win. Let me say that again. Focus more on trying to score than trying to win. And this will usually happen on its own. That's really important. Be present. Competing matters more. You know what's funny? I uh, I had this kid in college named Mac McGuire. You know Mac McGuire? No? Kent State kid. Four-time qualifier for the Nationals. Close to placing, close to being All-American. Ranked top 15. Pretty tough wrestler. And uh, we wrestled five times ago. And all five times, I won. But 
I never scored a takedown like that, ever in my life. So winning five matches, right, by a point, by two points, it was like a cheap tilt or a reversal or something stupid, right in time. That's hard to do, right? I didn't match up well with this kid. That's why I could never score a takedown. So one day, Kent State and Iowa State are wrestling at the national duels. And Ohio State has the winner. Now, I don't match up well with Matt. It's like our third or fourth time wrestling. Oh, man, I've never taken this guy down. Last time I won because of a freaking cheap tilt. This is this sucks. I don't want to wrestle. Who am I hoping wins the duel? Iowa State. I don't want to wrestle back. I don't match up well with him. So I'm sitting there watching it come down to heavyweight. And I'm emotionally investing in something. Oh, two. Ah, come on, Iowa State. Ah. And all of a sudden, Kent State wins. And I just took an emotional loss before I even have to wrestle. Right? It's a problem. Imagine if I can look at something like this. Instead of, oh my God, I don't match up well with this guy. To, ooh, I don't match up well with this guy. Right? Now that's a little like delusionally optimistic. But imagine if you can get some more of this than the other one. Then, oh my gosh. Oh, I'm on that side of the bracket. Oh, shit. So, ooh, I'm on that side of the bracket. What if you can look at it with excitement? Hope is usually pulled from fear. Usually. Usually. I hope I win. It's outcome based. I hope I lose. It's outcome based. It's usually pulled from fear. What's excitement pulled from? If hope is pulled from fear, what's excitement pulled from? The strongest corny, strongest force in the world. Love. Usually. Usually it is, right? I, I hope I win. I hope I win. Usually fear based. Oof. This is going to be sick. Usually I love under. Right? Be more like that. Now, it's easy for me to just say, be more like that with no advice, right? It's a constant, fake to you, maybe type of habit that. You have to do and coaches have to do to get you to value the right things. Being present, control the controllables, and usually good things will happen. Usually. And if they don't happen, guess what? You got better at wrestling. If you try not to lose and do zero moves and you win, cool. You won one zero, you did zero moves. If you try to do moves and you lose 20 to 10, which one got you better at wrestling positions? The 20 to 10 one. So that's the long-term investment. That's the one you're going to see a return on 10 years from now. Because, hey, I've gotten into 5,000 positions, and you, trying not to lose, got into four positions last year. I got better wrestling. I'm going to be better long term. That matters. That matters. All right? So get these. Winners win. Winners find a way. All these quotes out of your head. And you have one freaking job. Score points. And don't say it. Don't say it. Yeah. Don't smoke crap. That's important. It's life lesson. Let's bring it in. Here you go. Bring it in. Bring it in. That's 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 life lesson. Man. Don't smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Crap. Yeah. yeah. What is it? Crap will be black. What is that? Uh, let's um. Crack. Don't smoke crap. Crack. Yeah. You want to do that on three? No. Uh, no. Let's do something good. Uh, no. Let's do something good. Johnny on three. One, One two, two, three. Johnny. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. Hey guys, I got some no tomorrow gear in my car and the sad it's only adult sizes, not youth sizes. But older guys, let me know if you want to. Hell oh, yeah. If there's a